On day one, I spawned in as a tiny spider in a lush forest. I immediately noticed my family hiding away in fear. Huh? Guys, why is everyone hiding? Oh goodness, my boy, no! As my mother yelled, the ground beneath me started rising, lifting me away from the forest floor. Mom! Dad! Son, jump! I... I'm scared! Because of my fear, I was brought upward. And to my horror, I wasn't in a forest at all, but a terrarium in a laboratory. Hello, little spider. You are my next destiny subject. <laughs> what? No! But he picked me up and placed me into a machine. What are you doing? It began to activate, filling up with a burning potion. Ah! Because of this, I was mutated into a spider dragon. It worked. It actually worked. With this successful potion, I am closer than ever to finishing my experiment. And when it is done, everyone will bow before me. Now, I don't need you or any of these pests anymore. What? No. Mom! Dad! But it was too late. The scientist walked forward and smashed the terrarium to pieces, killing my family. No! With the press of a button, I was sent into darkness! Ah, ah. I landed in a terrifying tunnel. That scientist, who would do that to someone? I then looked forward and realized I was on a conveyor belt being sent to my death. No, 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 no. I I tried to outrun the belt, but it was too fast. No, I'm gonna fall. Out of nowhere, I was picked up by something. It scooped me up and left me to safety before spitting me back out. Ugh. Wait, a mutated frog? Ah, what are you? Oh man, I thought you were food. Ugh, you're lucky I don't eat weird stuff. Uh, wait. I followed the frog only to see that he lived in some sort of trashy little home. Wait, no, please help me. I was a normal spider and now I'm this and my family, they're gone. I guess you're Dr. Zohar's latest creation. And from the looks of things, you're his first success in combining two different creatures. Which means his experiment to make the perfect species is now beginning. That's not good. I can't believe this. He took my family away from me just for an experiment. In my anger, I unleashed a power I didn't know I had, causing the conveyor belt to break. Whoa. Because of this, we heard a scary robot mech entering the room. Scanning for faults. Commencing area sweep. Great. Look what you did, you idiot. You lured one of Dr. Zohar's robots. Without hesitation, the frog hopped towards a crack in the wall, leaving me. Wait, uh, hold up. On day three, from high up in the ceiling, I noticed that we were above Dr. Zohar's main lab. Wow. Hey, stop following me. It wasn't long until we both saw an exit. We both rushed towards the door, but something caught my eye. It was a fang, very similar to mine. What is this? this you really are an idiot oh my see ya ignoring the frog i grabbed the fang and because of this i felt a surge of strength within me causing my fangs to grow whoa is this fang connected to me as i stood in awe on the table alarms started to blare throughout the lab Something trying to escape? Oh no, I leapt off the table, making a break for the exit and finally making it outside. Whoa, the world, it's breathtaking. I then heard a familiar voice crying out. Help! Huh? Following the cries led me to a lakeside waterfall. 
That's where I saw the mutated frog was being cornered by a mech. Confirm. Experiment 43 is still alive. We'll eliminate. I thought back to being too scared before. Not taking the jump. Not again. Hiya! Where are you going? Uh, saving you. The mech used the opening and blasted me against the wall. Ah! It was about to take me down. But a new power surged within me. And I unleashed a powerful bite? Whoa! I hurt the mech so bad that it began to malfunction and ran off into the forest. Whoa, did I just do that? Whoa, man, you're weirdly stronger. And uh, uh, thanks for saving me, or whatever. Look, that doctor is planning something, something bad. I need to know what it is before he hurts any more creatures. Why do you care anyways? You escaped, just go live your life. That scientist killed my family and I can't let him hurt anyone else with what he's planning. Ugh. Fine, Mr. Hero. Follow me. I followed the frog through the underbrush until we reached a hidden area in the forest. <sighs> Look, you saved me, so I owe you one. Mr. Fur, he's who you're looking for. Mr. Fur? Who's that? He was Zohar's first ever creation. First one to be made and tested on. Last I saw him was when he escaped to the flower forest. Find him and you'll find your answers. On day five, my search for the flower forest led me to the edge of a modern looking town. Huh, maybe someone here knows where the forest is. They all seem friendly. A spider? No. A dragon? What is that thing? Listen, I need help to... The man didn't care and ran up to me trying to crush me. Ah! Hey, stop that! I began racing through the streets as the town erupted into chaos. Monster! Mutant! No, no, you're wrong. I I'm not a monster. But they wouldn't listen. And the horde of people chased me around a corner where something pulled me away. Whoa! Wh wh where'd it go? I looked around at my new surroundings, which was a hidden torchlit room. And in it had a group of talking vegetables? I am so confused. Rightfully so, young creature. Like us, you were not welcomed by the humans. I followed the vegetable leader as he brought me to a window. For a long time now, we've had to remain hidden ever since the humans arrived. Our town was once a small, peaceful village, but then they came and took it over, modernizing it and using my people as food! Why are you telling me this? Because I have ears all over, and I know of your quest to find the flower forest. You help us, and I will show you the way. On day six, I followed the vegetable leader through a tunnel that led to a street. There, he showed me a building larger than all of the rest. Okay, no pressure. It's too risky for my men to enter, especially unarmed. But we have weapons that are kept deep within that building, locked in a vault. If you go and move the centerpiece, we'll take it from there. Please, we need this for our cows. I started to walk towards the street, but just then, more people started to walk by. Whoa, okay, I have to stay hidden. I patiently waited for the right moment to run into the building. And once inside, I saw a long corridor and at the end of it was the vault. But while making my way towards it, I overheard a conversation. You see that creature in town today? Yeah. My guess is that crazy scientist made it. He's still obsessed with inventing shape-shifting or whatever. Man, that guy's insane. Wait, shape-shifting? The two finally walked out of sight, leaving a clear path to the vault. I ran up and slipped through a tiny crack, making it inside. Stored all around me was medieval weaponry and the centerpiece. They want me to move this? Okay. Ugh. Yes, yes, you've done it. Everyone, weapon up! 
they all jumped up from the tunnel, pouring into the vault and grabbing the weapons. The vegetable revolution has begun! On day seven, chaos erupted through the town. There were vegetables running in complete rage everywhere. You kicked us out, ate our people. Well, look at us now. It was definitely a sight to behold with countless vegetables taking their revenge. This is what I get for trying to eat healthy! The people fled in fear as they were chased out. The town, you guys did it. The town is yours. Yes, we did. Finally, we have won. Man, it must be nice being around your people having a home? I wonder what that feels like. You have done us a great service. Now, eat. One of the vegetables ran up to me. Show our hero here exactly where the flower forest is. I followed the beat through a path in the mountains that led right up to the enchanted flower forest. Everything was so beautiful, except for one cave on the mountainside. It was dark, muddy, and ominous yeah well here you go i'm gonna go now or like whatever <laughs> uh thanks i think i know where to go from here um hello is anyone here what do you want mr fur is it someone told me that you might know more about dr zohar i see you're not normal Hmm. Come with me. We traveled within his cave and into his makeshift lab. Zohar's been planning his so-called experiments for years and years in order to perfect shape-shifting. That word, uh, again, shape-shifting? What does it mean? It's when a creature of any kind has the ability to change into what it best sees fit, whether it be a snake, a little tiny ant, or something much, much worse. If he was able to finally succeed in merging two different species, a spider and a dragon, for example, then he isn't very far from accomplishing his end goal. Which is what? His takeover. We can't let him get away with this. I mean, someone has to stop him, right? Maybe that someone is you. Our conversation was quickly interrupted by a rumbling noise. Uh, what was that? I don't know. Suddenly, a ghoulish creature came bursting through one of the cave walls. Um, what is that thing? <laughs> ran in and slammed the rat against the wall. Hey, knock it off. My poisonous bite seemed to stun it, but it didn't do much. Hey, up here. On days nine to 10, I ran with Mr. Fur until we reached a room with a balcony. There in all of Fur's junk were dragon wings. I then thought back to what happened in Zohar's lab. Could this be? What are you doing? I grabbed the wings, causing me to upgrade. My wings grew much stronger, and I now had even more hearts. What? How did? Just then, the horrifying creature came storming into the room. Quick! I grabbed Mr. Fur and leapt off of the balcony, flying him safely to the edge of the flower forest. Woo! Whoa, these wings, they're amazing. That's it. What do you mean, what's it? When I escaped Zohar's lab, I took supplies, hoping to find a cure for my mutations. Okay, look, how is this important right now? Zohar uses specific ingredients to create the potions used on us. And every time you find one of yours, I amplify my abilities and grow even stronger. Oh no, the ghoul, it's getting closer. Come on, I think I know somewhere safe that we can go. On days 11 to 12, we arrived back to the hidden area of the forest and saw that the mutated frog had already built himself up a swampy home. Ah, uh, you actually found him? Ah, uh, I mean, <laughs> great. <laughs> Wait, what? You're still alive? Yeah, I'm fine. Just been hiding away. So, nothing's changed. Um... 
I can see that this is a bit awkward. I'll just be over here. <laughs> I decided to focus on my own space and begin constructing a nest that would fit both of my spider and dragon side. After some effort, I stepped back to admire my work. Dr. Zohar, his plans are no joke. But what does he want to transform into? Suddenly, a loud shout grabbed my attention. What the? I rushed over to see that Mr. Fur had built up a lab for himself. And out in front of it was a baby lion. Hey, what are you doing in the forest? Please don't hurt me. I don't want to cause any trouble at my home. It's so horrible. Wait, what? On days 13 to 14, the lion cub and I ventured into his desert home. But once we emerged from its tunnel, we saw the whole lion civilization was under attack. Horrifying ghouls roamed around, attacking the lions mindlessly. And above them loomed Dr. Zohar himself. Don't worry, your sacrifices are for science, except your new lives. I watched in horror as mechs caged some of the lions, while the others that resisted were turned into deadly ghoul mutations. That's where those ghouls are coming from. And he's beginning to test on larger species? That's not good. No! They're taking my dad! The lion cub began to run towards the cages. Hey, stop! It's too dangerous. Look, I promise I'll get your father back, but you need to go back to my base. The cub hesitated, but turned around and ran back out through the tunnel. With that, I used my new wings to soar above the destruction and follow where Dr. Zohar went. On days 15 to 16, after following the direction of the scientists, I was led right back to the lab I was created in. I followed the distant roars of the lions and came across a creepy room. And there lied a book. As I read it, I realized that it was about how I was created and all the ingredients that were used. There's only three more. The sacred spider spinner, a deadly dragon egg, and the connected heart? What is that? What the? I looked and saw that the banging was coming from a blocked off doorway. Whatever is behind there sure doesn't seem friendly. I continued on following the lion's roars until I saw that right in the center was the lion cub's father trapped in a testing tube. There you are. But before I could break him out, something hit me away. Ah! I looked up. And there he was, Dr. Zohar. You, my first successful creation. I know what you're planning, and I'm not gonna let you get away with it. I ran up and tried to bite him, but he easily swatted me back down. Ah! What I am planning is perfection. The power to transform into any given creature at any moment. That power will be played. I will be looked after. No, you'll be feared. <laughs> what is wrong with that? Everyone has always treated me like a joke. Put a ceiling over my head. But with this, I'll prove them all wrong. I won't even be bound by my own species. And they will all fall under my rule. He walked over to the machine in front of the lion and turned it on. No, what are you doing? Stop! We fought as he swung around his massive arm and threw all kinds of potions at me. His movements were smart and nothing I did seemed to work on him. With another powerful hit, he knocked me back again. Once I reach my full potential and transform into the ultimate beast, I'll crush anyone who opposes me. My yo! The machine unleashed a beam that zapped the lion. No! Because of this, a vial dropped out. Now, for the first human test. He drank it, which transformed him into a lion. But it was only temporary as he transformed back. It worked! Now, to make it permanent, and you won't be able to see it! The doctor charged at me again, 
but a sudden sonic boom from below caused the floor to collapse. Ah! ah! I landed in some sort of skulk tunnel? Ew, what are you? Huh? I looked around only to see a different spider in the tunnel with me. Ah, uh, come on, you're not a warden spider? Warden spider? No, I'm a spider dragon. Yeah, and an ugly one. The spider began to walk away. Hey, wait, why did you save me back there? Because, pal, I got great hearing. That's why. And I heard the word spider coming from up there and thought that you were one of us. Boy, was I wrong. We then reached a crevice where he effortlessly swung across it. Whoa, I don't even have webs yet. Wait, the spider spinner. Hey, uh, do you know about the sacred spider spinner? Dude, quit following me, all right? You're invading my space. Yeah, I know about it, but like you're kind of creeping me out right now. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I just really need it. The fate of the world depends on it. Right. Oh. Totally. Okay, ugly spider thing. Uh, follow me. Wait, is that a yes? I kept following him until we reached an opening that revealed a vast warden spider ancient city. On days 22 to 26, I made my way to the heart of the ancient city to stand before the elder warden spider. What an ugly spider. Ugh. I'm not ugly. Look, I've come here for the sacred spider spinner. I need it. <laughs> Only the strongest spiders are granted the sacred spinner. Why do you think that we watch over it? And clearly you are no normal spider. Yeah, to be honest, I don't even really know what I am either. But I do know that I need that spinner and I'll do anything to prove that I deserve it. Is he telling the truth? Is he challenging us? He must face the trials of eight. He thinks that he's better than us. Silence! Come with me. Following the leader, I was led to another cave with an expansive track course. What defines a spider's power is their speed and strength. Our trial, the trials of eight, tests just that. If you want the spider spinner, then you must defeat our best on our home turf, which will be impossible. Fine, I accept. On days 27 to 29, I lined up at the starting line, surrounded by other warden spiders. The first two that cross the finish line will move on to the next trial. But first, show us your speed. Oh yeah, baby! Beat that ugly spider! He sucks! Go! The race went underway as the warden spiders quickly dashed ahead of me. The course was a mix of terrains where each one of the other spiders used their webs to pull ahead, but also to slow me down. Hey, knock it off! They could even swim through certain sections that were filled with lava. These guys are so strong. I was falling behind, struggling to even keep up in last place, but I can't give up. I just need to get at least second place. Yeah, what a spider wanna be. Finally, I could see the finish line where I saw a spider had just swung across. First place! I noticed that the other ones, though, were struggling. Now's my chance! I leapt up into the air, using my wings to carry me across and secure second place. Man, that was tough. I barely even passed. You got lucky this time, but luck won't save you in the final trial. On days 30 to 32, the first place spider and I were put inside of the spider city's arena. The final challenge is to prove one's strength. Before us, cage doors opened to reveal a menacing warden beast. The one who defeats the beast in combat wins! The beast charged forward immediately, clawing into both of us. Ah! We both tried to fight back with everything that we had. The warden spider's webs and sonic booms were doing nothing, and neither were my bites. He's just too strong. He even burrowed down to dodge our attacks and came right back up and set me against the wall. I was brought down to low 
apart. It then turned towards the warden spider and was about to kill him. No, stay away from him. With all of my remaining strength, I ran up and pushed the warden beast, standing in between the two of them. As the beast charged again in anger, it was suddenly launched backwards into its cage. Enough! Well, it seems like we both lost. No, you have proven yourself. Wait, what? But I didn't defeat it. While speed and strength make a great spider, it is bravery and selflessness that makes a great person. You've shown me that by saving a fellow spider. Putting yourself in front of him like that? Please, take the spinner. Falling into the arena was the sacred spider spinner. And when I grabbed it, I upgraded. I gained five more hearts and could now shoot out my own webbing. Awesome. On days 33 to 35, I swung into my base to see a small group of lion cubs. You guys made it back safely. Yeah. So where's my dad? Look, I couldn't save him. Not yet. But don't worry. I'm going to do whatever I can to reunite you two by stopping that scientist. That crazy scientist. What he's doing? It's just wrong. I know, but let me worry about him. I went to work on building them their own desert lion den. Oh, wow. Thank you. When I first saw you, I, I really thought you were a monster. But you're actually the complete opposite. Yeah, thanks. I then noticed that Wart was alone, overlooking the nearby woods. Hey, What's going on? It's just that seeing all that you're doing, helping others, facing the person that turned us into monsters, makes me think about all the decisions I've made. Well, you know, it's never too late to change. Well, I think it is. I was only a baby frog when I found out I was just a failed experiment. But it was Mr. Fur who saved me. He wanted to find a way to fix us. You know, turn us back to a normal rat and a frog. But I had accepted what I was, a piece of trash. So he made his escape while I hid away like a coward, watching countless other experiments suffer and die. I regret not doing something, not caring. Look. You may think that it's too late, but I think it's never too late to change who you are. Just then, I realized, where is Mr. Fur? On days 36 to 39, I looked around the base and went into Mr. Fur's home lab, only to see that he wasn't there, but instead, a mysterious tunnel leading outward. I better follow it. I did, until I found myself facing a large government facility that was on fire? What happened here? Using my webs and wings, I scaled the walls and flew over to get a better view. The facility was overrun with a bunch of the ghoulish creations. Dr. Zohar must be here. I need to be careful. Finding a way in through a bunker doorway, I spotted him at the end of the hall. He was grabbing some strange government equipment. Yes. This is it, the final piece for my experiment. Now, to assemble everything. Now go, clear up this place and leave no survivors. He then stormed out of the facility. Oh no. Suddenly, I heard a yell echoing from a nearby hallway. And gunfire? Stay down, you freak. I rushed over and saw a government agent fighting one of Zohar's ghouls. And thankfully, he took it down with one last gunshot. Hey, are you okay? Ah, another monster. Wait. The agent panicked and started firing at me. Ah! I flew around and used my new webs to quickly restrain him. Look, stop. I'm not going to hurt you. Sorry, it's just you look. Like a monster? Yeah, I know. We then heard a group of ghouls coming towards the noise of our fight. Quick, in here! We ducked into a separate room, narrowly escaping the patrolling monsters. That evil scientist Zohar, 
He came here and destroyed this entire place just for our fusion core. All the people that worked here, my friends, they've all turned into those monsters. I'm so sorry, Zohar. He created me too. And if we don't stop him, his plans will hurt a lot more people. Before, we thought he was just crazy. <laughs> but after he took one of our dragon eggs, we saw how dangerous he was becoming. So, we hid the other one. Wait, a dragon egg? I need that. It could be the key to stopping him. The agent nodded and led me into a surveillance room where monitors showed various areas of the facility, but they were all overrun. The egg was hidden away in a temple far away from here. You'll need that tablet to locate it, but that room is on the other side of the facility. And those ghouls aren't going to make it any easier, but I have to try. Good luck. I flew out and started to move as quietly as I could across the facility. The government has fallen. You might be our own. On days 45 to 47, I began to sneak through the halls. I've got to be extra careful. If more than one of these guys group up on me, I'm done for. Then, just as I was about to turn a corner, ah, that was too close. It wasn't long until I reached the room that was holding the tablet. There it is. I ran up and grabbed it, but this caused alarms to blare throughout the facility, signaling my location to every single ghoul. Oh no. Quickly, I used my webs to seal the entrance to the room, but they all arrived and began to slash at the webbing from the other side. I need a way out of here. Now, a vent was high up in the ceiling above me. Perfect. I flew up and bit it open, slipping through just in time. On days 48 to 52, the beeping tablet led me to a secluded tropical island marked with a massive deadly skull. They couldn't have chosen someplace easier. I flew closer, and as I did, there were platforms that crawled up the skull, and the doorway was opened? Someone else is here. Cautiously, I went inside when a loud alert sounded. Suddenly, I was swiped at and knocked back by a hidden figure, only to find it was Mr. Fur. Oh, it's you? How did you find this place? Look, it's a long story, but how about you? I came to help you find the dragon egg. Supposedly, it's in the most secure point of this temple. Looking over, we saw the creeping staircase that led down into the island. Well, let's go. We ventured down into a large tunnel that was layered with saw blades. And at the end was a menacing tiki statue that began to activate. That can't be good. On days 53 to 56, we began to run down the tunnel as the tiki unleashed a barrage of elemental attacks. Fire, lightning, and boulders were thrown right at us. Ow! Look out! I was trying my best to get him close, but I also had to watch out for the saw blades. This is insane! You're telling me! While I struggled to push through the obstacles, Mr. Fur was fighting to keep up, and he wasn't looking too good. No! I used my webs to create a protective wall for him as I finally reached the pillar at the end. But because of this, it separated, and three tiki heads ran into attack. Get out of our sacred temple! Mr. Fur finally reached the end of the tunnel with me when the floor gave out from under us. Ah! We landed far below in a chamber with the dragon egg at its center. Yes, we made it. I went and picked up the egg, but instead of upgrading, a shadowy version of myself emerged from the darkness. So you wish to take the dragon egg, do you? Who, who are you? The question is, what am I? A monster. A creature made just to destroy. I am you. He flew in to attack much faster than I could react. Ah! No, you're wrong. I'm not a monster. Yes, 
Keep lying to yourself. Zohar created you, and all he creates is destruction. You will never live a life where those around you don't fear you. You will never be looked at as anything more than a threat. He lunged back at me for another attack. Ah! I can't defend myself against this guy. Stop it. Just stop. Yes. Let your rage consume you. You will never be strong enough without letting it take control. You will never stop Zohar without it. He flew back again for another attack. I said, stop. A surge of rage filled me as I unleashed a deadly dragon breath, causing the shadowy form to drop down, defeated. Good. <laughs> Good. The figure faded away, and I was now upgraded into a stronger spider dragon. I gained five more hearts and had a new dragon breath attack. Yes, but the entire temple then began to shake. Come on, we need to get out of here now. On day 63 to 68, Mr. Fur and I returned to our base where we saw Wart. Oh, there you are. You're okay. Yeah. We are. I walked past him slowly into my home. Oh, you okay? No. That other version of me? He kind of had a point, right? Look, I, I was born from horrible ideas. And I was born to fuel and create a monster. Oh, whoa. Look, ever since I've known you, you've been trying to figure out who you are. But you've been answering that question all along. You aren't what you were created or born from but what you made of yourself. And that is a hero. Yeah, but everyone will always just see us as monsters. What if that never changes? You know, a friend once told me that it's never too late for someone to change, ever. Yeah, right. I looked over to the front of my base and saw the government agent from earlier. Hey, you made it. I had nowhere else to go. Well, let me get you a place to settle. I quickly built him his very own facility in our base. Thank you. Sincerely. Of course. Now, all that's left is the connected heart. The connected heart? Oh, that's not good. Wait, why? On day 69 to 73, I was following Mr. Fur as we were sneaking through Dr. Zohar's lab. Wait, what are we doing back here? It's dangerous. The last item you need, it lies beneath this lab, and it's a little complicated. We made it back into the room with the ingredient book. And in front of us was that ominous doorway I saw all that time ago. Wait, the connected heart, it's in there? Okay, wish me luck. He did as I entered the door, revealing a stairway that led deep under the laboratory. I then reached a basement room at the end of the stairway that was very eerie. Hello? Anyone here know about a connected heart? Suddenly, a bright light began to form in front of me, and in a blast, there was a spirit made of souls? A dragon spider thing? Spider dragon, actually. Sorry, we don't get many visitors down here. We? Wait, what are you? I am one with the many lost souls made from all of the spirits of Zohar's failed experiments. We all stay here where it's safe. The soul then gestured towards the empty floor and summoned a ghastly portal. I know why you are here. Come with me. On day 74 to 77, after I stepped through the portal, I fell into an otherworldly graveyard village. It was full of even more spirits from Zohar's past experiments. Who is that guy? The soul that was with me before rose up in the center of the village. My fellow lost souls, this visitor here seeks our connected heart. One of the other souls then rushed up to me. I sense darkness within you. 
I can see how badly your soul battles to decide the route your life should take. Is he really someone who can even handle our heart? Let us see. Whispers and chants filled the air as all of the souls in the village caused a walkway to reveal itself. I followed the lost soul to a forked path that split into two passageways. Two paths lie before you. And each could bring you to what you want. One shrouded in darkness, and the other bathed in light. Looking down the dark path, I saw that the connected heart, it's right there. I was about to rush down it, but I remembered Mr. Fur's words. You aren't what you were created or born from, but what you made of yourself. The darker path is always easier to go down but the light path is the right thing to do. I ran down the light path and far, far in the distance was the connected heart. On day 78 to 80, as I ran through the light tunnel, I heard a bunch of voices. Monster! What, what you did, you idiot? Now, dispose of the waste. No, no, stop! I knew I had to keep going, but I just kept getting hit back. The lost soul's voice then echoed through the tunnel. Pushing past these memories is no easy feat, but if you can hold the weight of these words, you can hold our heart. With each step, I pushed through the hurtful words, and with newfound strength, I remembered all the good memories. When I first saw you, I, I really thought you were a monster. But you're actually the complete opposite. It's never too late for someone to change. And but what you made of yourself, and that is a hero. They're right. I can be a hero. I have to try. I pushed past the heavy weight holding me back and finally grabbed the connected heart. Because of this, I was teleported back to the center of the graveyard village, surrounded by all of the lost souls. You have proven that you can carry all of our hearts within you. With that, we can finally rest and be in peace. I'm so sorry that Dr. Zohar brought you into this world only to kill you guys. It's okay now. We know we have chosen the right person to carry our power. With those final words, the spirits of the lost souls began to disappear and flow into me. Their power caused me to upgrade. I gained 10 more hearts and could now rush forward and slam into my enemies. Whoa, I did it. I know what I have to be. I am what I make myself. And I'm gonna prove this entire world just that. On days 86 to 90, I was leaving the area when I saw a new test testing site had been built up, and there was Dr. Zohar. My perfect vial. It's complete! Finally! What? No! No! He drank the vial, and this time transformed into a large, deadly dragon. His power was unmatched as he rained destruction down on the world. This was the deadly beast. That's why he merged me with a dragon. Suddenly, his attention snapped towards me. I spoke too loud. Ah, you here to see that I meant what I said? My experiment was a success, and soon the promise made to run the world will be told. Zohar blasted me from the sky, and in one hit, I was brought down to low hearts. Ah! His incredible amount of strength was too much for me. I don't know what to do. But then, Wart leapt in, knocking me under a tree. Ah! Wait, Wart? What are you doing? Doing what's right. Since the day I was created, I've only cared about myself. Only been selfish. But now, it's time to prove you right. People can change. Now, go! With that, Wart jumped out into the open to face Zohar alone. No, wait! Zohar noticed him and started to blast at him. Leave now! I reluctantly listened while a fire breath hit him from above. Ah! 
Uh, finally, a real purpose. On days 91 to 94, I safely made it back home. Bozo, thank goodness. Wait, where's Ward? He died, sacrificing himself just for me. I'm sorry. What do we do now? I'm not sure. I went and built up a memorial for Ward in his personal swamp. He may have lived part of his life in fear, but he shouldn't be remembered for that. He should be remembered for his courage and his selflessness. A reminder that we all have the power to change. Hello, I, I'm so sorry, but a crazy dragon was sighted in that town nearby. Do you think it's... Zohar, no. We have to stop him before it's too late. On days 95 to 99, I followed the path of destruction left by the scientist until it led me right back to the vegetables town he was raining down more flames onto its citizens burning everything ah, help us i flew into the chaos and took out a group of the ghouls that were attacking the veggie leader this dragon he's destroying everything fight men Fight! I charged towards the center of the town, fighting back waves of ghouls with the help of the vegetables. What? You really think that you can stop me? Zohar, stop this now! Never! This is my ultimate form! My perfect form! I fought through the last line and flew up to him on the center building. You should have died in my incinerator! You don't deserve a life! He unleashed an attack, but I dodged out of the way and used my newest ability, which missed him, but actually hit his potions, causing something to happen. All of the potions burst and began to change Zohar. What? What have you done to me? He morphed into a massive failed experiment, a real monster. On day 100, the newly mutated Zohar swung his massive arms wildly, trying to hit me out of the sky. I flew around the town, hitting him with everything I had. My perfect form ruined by a monster. You are the monster, Zohar, and I'm not gonna let you get away with any of this. We continued fighting as my attacks would burn away at him. After I kill you, I will turn the world into this mutation. You will see. I thought back to all of those good memories of Mr. Fur and Wart. I'm not going to let you. I won't. He swung again, aiming for a final hit. But I hit him head on with my dragon breath as he started to shrink down. With one final rush, I took down Dr. Zohar for good, and the world could now finally live in peace.